Welcome to the Week in Review, where we take a second look at the major activities and issues that occurred within government and nationally. I'm Richmond Felix. The week began with government's clarification over the recent framework agreement with Desert Star Holdings. The government of St. Lucia welcomes the questions and scrutiny that comes with potentially transformative projects. That's the word coming from Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Bradley Felix, speaking on the proposed 700-acre development in Viewfort by Desert Star Holdings. Honorable Bradley Felix is the Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for commerce, industry, investment, enterprise development, and consumer affairs. He told the press at a briefing on Monday that the framework agreed Agreement with the Desert Star Holdings does not circumvent St. Lucia's legislation. The framework agreement has not and cannot by definition, definition grant CIP approved status or DCA approval to the project. In fact, DSH is currently pursuing its DCA approval and indeed will be making its application to the CIP status once the government has fulfilled its obligation to make the necessary changes to the CIP legislation. These changes would allow a mixed use real estate development enterprise involving inter alia entertainment and sporting facilities are the third category under the real estate provision of the CIP legislation. Minister Felix says all necessary measures were taken to protect St. Lucia and its resources. The government of St. Lucia wishes to assure the public that the framework agreement was worded to ensure that the development was conducted in accordance with the laws of St. Lucia and standard commercial practice and is not so framed as to breach the laws of the land or the integrity of the process, including the necessity of having an environmental impact assessment. This government is a responsible government, and DSH is a proven, reputable global developer. Both parties have agreed to mutually beneficial terms, which we are confident will impact positively on the economy, physical environment, and people of St. Lucia. The framework agreement was signed on the 29th of July. Invest St. Lucia says should the project gain approval, it will be phased in over a 10 to 15 year period. Meanwhile, Invest St. Lucia continues to make strategic plans for the southern part of the island as the broader vision for St. Lucia develops. Recently, a framework agreement was signed for a U.S. $2.6 billion project in Viewfort. According to Invest St. In Lucia, the project fits in their plans for proposed land use in the area. Said, yes, it's part of a larger, um, thus far, undocumented vision for Viewfort. And when I say undocumented, if you look to your right and you see this map there, you would see that that map, which has DCA approval, is a map of all the lands currently owned by Invest St. Lucia. And this is all we could have done within our park to say that those lands that we own, we have proposed a land use plan for those lands that in an ideal situation would be part of a broader land use plan for the entire country and for the area. Uh, unfortunately, we have not yet got to that stage of that broader land use plan. Invest in Lucia evolved from the National Development Corporation and is now the official investment promotions agency linking St. Lucia to the international world. Doctors and nurses of the Victoria Hospital recently received intensive training on new high-tech operating tables at the Owen King EU Hospital. We have this report from the Ministry of Health. Doctors and nurses at the Victoria Hospital recently received intensive training on the brand new high-tech operating tables recently installed at the Owen King EU Hospital. The OR tables are highly automated and come fully equipped with numerous accessories for various surgical procedures. So you have here many of the accessories for orthopedics mainly and general surgeries, um, obstetrics, etc. These tables are very stable and uh, they have also um, many features that will help the healthcare professionals to do a better job in the day and day work. At the end of the two-day training session, doctors and nurses will have a full understanding of the operations of the new OR tables and accessories, including the advanced features of the equipment. Departmental manager for the day surgery unit and ICU at the Victoria Hospital, Sylvia Molwi, expressed the excitement of the staff to receive this timely training. We're learning 
how to operate the new, our new operating table. And it has quite a bit of features that we didn't have with the others. It makes life very much easier. Um, our patients a lot safer. So that is, that is good. Um, we're here from yesterday. We're learning quite a lot. It's a lot to take in at one time, but then we're excited. We never compromise care. We always give optimal care to our patients. But um, with the features that this table has, it will make it easier. Our patients will be safer. And that's what we're excited about. We we'll no longer will we have to improvise to keep our patients safe. Esquerdo also gave her impressions of the Owen King EU Hospital, having visited many institutions in the Caribbean and Central America. I believe that the, hospitals, the hospital is really nice. Um, it has like all the equipment uh, required, necessary, and most of the equipments they have are really high tech. And um, I, I, I hope they will open very soon because uh, people is very excited about the equipment and the treatment that they will be able to give to the patient. Over the past few weeks, there has been a surge of new equipment and furniture arriving at the Owen King EU Hospital, including beds, tables, chairs and shelving for all areas of the hospital in preparation for the eventual opening of the facility. From the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Glenn Simon reporting. In this next report, UNESCO provides support to four agencies. St. Lucia continues to receive financial and technical support from UNESCO's participation program for the initiation of a number of developmental projects. Four agencies recently benefited from the initiative when the St. Lucia National Commission for UNESCO held a check presentation ceremony totaling 201,615 EC dollars. Secretary General of UNESCO, Masia Symphoria Mlora, says the developmental projects are very important as they enhance UNESCO's mission. Essentially, what we're here to do today is to signal the official start of the implementation of those four projects that have been granted funding. And we are very pleased to be able to present those checks to the Department of Gender Relations, the Peter Management Area Office, the Ministry of Education for two projects, one in mathematics and one in science. I want to thank all of you for being here with us today, and I want to congratulate all of the, the implementing agencies who submitted and who continue to show an interest in the work of the Commission. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, and Sustainable Development, the Honorable Dr. Gil Rigobert, expressed delight that this initiative will impact the very lives of St. Lucians. I want to thank those agencies who applied because very often we think that there is a shortage of resources but I firmly believe that there are resources out there in the universe so we have simply to reach out and tap into those resources so I want to thank those of you who took the time and made the effort to table your application and here we are as proud recipients a testimony to the value of the work that you have put in and an indication of the level of importance that UNESCO has placed on the work that you are proposing to undertake. UNESCO provides support for activities in the field of education, natural science, social and human science, culture, communication and technology. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Fina Neptune reporting. Over the past few years, Darren Sami has taken the world of international cricket by storm, leading the West Indies to capture two world titles within four years and establishing his legacy on the field of play. On Wednesday evening, Captain Sami laid down the foundation to ensure his ultimate legacy. Grateful to those who have contributed to his success and deeply passionate about the youth, Captain Sammy has established the Darren Sammy Foundation to fulfill a lifelong dream to give back. The foundation is the next step in fulfilling his philanthropic goals beyond the occasional helping hand. The overall goal is to nurture, mold, and provide opportunities and supplies to young emerging cricketers. 
Darren Sammy said the foundation will provide the necessities that parents can. So you will have the, those kids that, you know, they are, they are bright, but, you know, the mom just cannot provide the necessaries to push them further, to, be, to break that barrier, to become that, that future champion for not only St. Lucia, but the rest of the world. And, you know, I'm really, really thankful that, you know, a few people, um, groups um, paid attention, you know, um, and I just want to give back. The objectives of the foundation are to raise $300,000 to produce high-quality sports programs, to provide educational and sporting supplies to underprivileged athletes, to outfit 10 fully equipped gear bags for 10 individual cricketers, and to provide 20 students with school supplies at the beginning of each school year. A mentorship program for budding champions will also be established to assess and develop physical and technical skills. Honorable Leonard Montuk, Minister for Youth Development and Sports, congratulated Sammy. Let me, on behalf of the government of St. Lucia, congratulate Darren. First of all, for all his accomplishments, the way he has represented us with pride and honor. And secondly, let me see, um, congratulate him on the launch of the Darren Sami Foundation. I want to say that this is a wonderful initiative and example for other celebrities, should I say, not just sportsmen, to follow. And when you have achieved in life, it is always good to give back. And so Darren, we embrace your initiative and I want to encourage all St. Lucians just as they supported you and are supporting you through your career as a, an athlete, that you will get our support throughout with this foundation. Beneficiaries of the Darren Sammy Foundation must be citizens of St. Lucia aged 9 to 18, must be enrolled in primary or secondary school, must be athletes who are part of a school team, physical education class or community team, must be a student from a low-income family, must show continuous academic improvement, and must participate in at least one extracurricular activity. It's summer and the French are here once again. Mercury Beach, a nautical event that began in Martinique as a thank you to those who purchased outboard motors, grew to a massive niche and recently found its home in St. Lucia. Maritime consultant Cuthbert Didier says Mercury Beach is poised to boost St. Lucia's mainstay tourism industry during the traditional slow season. Mercury Beach fills up Rodney Bay Marina IGY and also Marigold. But it also reminds our, Saint Lu our Martinica neighbors that we have the infrastructure. So it sells St. Lucia as a sailing weekend excursion for our French colleagues. Didier says this weekend's free day for event festivity will deliver money into the hands of many St. Lucians, thereby spinning the economic wheels of the country. Well, Mercury benefits us in a lot of ways. One critical thing is that it fills rooms. The economic footprint of Mercury is very, very broad. It's from the coconut vendor to the five-star hotel. So you are right, August when we do the staycation, the hotel rooms, the occupancies are traditionally very low. Mercury is a boost in the arm for a lot of hotels and also small properties and also villas and private properties. Mercury Beach begins on Friday, August 12, and concludes on Sunday, August 14. Over 7,000 visitors were recorded for last year's event. Organizers are making accommodations for even more this time around. Coming up next week, the House of Assembly meets on Tuesday from 10 a.m. On Wednesday, the Marcus Garvey Emancipation and Reparations Rally will be held at 7 p.m. at the UE Open Campus to launch St. Lucia's activities in observance of the UN Decade for People of African Descent. There will be a sitting of the Senate on Thursday from 10 a.m. The National Television Network will be bringing you all these events live. August 19 is World Humanitarian Day and then we have another recap at the week's end. This has been the Week in Review. From the Government Information Service, I'm Richmond Felix.